In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called maximum product subarray. So we're given an integer array nums, find a contiguous subarray that has the maximum product, and return that product value. So subarray is basically a contiguous sub, uh, subsequence of the array. So basically, this question is kind of similar to the maximum um, subarray problem. And basically, the idea is the same. We have given an array. We have, for each and every single element, we have two choices. Uh, one is we can be able to take the current item and add it onto the current sub contiguous subarray, or we start a brand new current uh, contiguous subarray starting from the current element, right? So one way we can solve this problem is we can use a brute force approach for each every single item. Uh, you do a linear scan on the right to find the maximum um, product subarray. And at the end, we're comparing each and every single iteration to find the maximum product subarray. Right, so approach will give us a time complexity of big O of n square. So it's not the most optimal solution, right? So in this case, to solve this problem using a linear um, is kind of similar to what I just talked about for the uh, maximum product, a uh, maximum subarray, right? And the idea is the same for each, every single item, we have two choices. So, but the thing is that we could have negative values, right? And we can also have zeros. So in this case, if I have all positive value, like for the maximum value we have seen so far is just one or the current item, right? So in this case, the maximum value that we've seen so far is one or just the current item, right? We're starting a brand new contiguous subarray or we're combining with the current contiguous subarray. So in this case, we are, it doesn't really matter because we have two, two times one is two or just two itself, right? And then now we have three. So in this case, we have a side that we stick to three or uh, three times two. In this case, three times two will give us a bigger product. So the current maximum product subarray is gonna be six, right? But if we have a negative values, this will simply not gonna work because for the maximum product for this position is gonna be negative two. For the maximum product for this position is either three or three times negative two. In this case, three is bigger, right? And then for this position, we either have negative four times three, or we have just negative four. In this case, the negative four is bigger. So we basically keep track of the maximum value. In this case, the maximum value that we've seen is three. So in this case, that will give us a incorrect answer because the maximum product that, we, that we're expecting is gonna be 24, right? Sorry, it is gonna be positive 24. So in this case, uh, we can't really use the same method because here you can see we always keep track of the maximum value, right? And we also need the minimum value so that we can be able to compare is to see if if it's the minimum value that we that we see is bigger or the maximum value that we see is bigger, right? So that if we have a minimal value or sorry a negative value, right? That will also because negative value times negative value will give us a positive value, so we can be able to uh, find the uh, the maximum product subarray. And let me show you an example. Initially, we have an array. And in this case, we're going to keep track of the maximum uh, the maximum value that we've seen. So uh, the maximum product that we've seen so far, plus the minimum value, that, the min minimum product that we've seen so far, okay? So in this case, initially, we have an array, and the first element is gonna be two and two, right? And then for when we get to the second element, in this case, we compare to see the minimum is gonna be uh, the current item, times uh, or or the um, the maximum value that we've seen so far times the, the current item or the minimum value that we've seen so far times the current item right so uh, at the end it will give us negative five for the maximum value that we've seen so far and the minimum value is going to be negative 10 okay so we're going to use that later because in this case if i see another negative value like right here if i see another negative value um, i can be able to get a positive value right so that could also be the, 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 the maximum product as well. So if I continue, you can see we have this, the third element, right? So for the third element, we can either um, get a current item or the, or the current item times the, the maximum item that we've seen so far, or the current item times the minimum value for, that we've seen so far for the min and the max, right? So in this case, we have three is the maximum value that we've seen so far, and the minimum is gonna be negative 30, okay? And then in this case, we continue for a fourth item. And uh, we have three as the maximum that we've seen so far. And negative 30 is the, the minimum item that we've seen so far. 
uh, we, once we get to negative four, you can see here, um, in this case, we also have to compare with the minimal value, right? In this case, you can see that once we get the negative value times the negative value, right, this will give us a positive value. So we get 120. And then for the minimum value that we've seen so far, it's going to be 12, negative 12, right? And then once we get to zero, um, of course, we're also going to have a placeholder like a result, which keep track of the maximum value that we've seen so far, right? The maximum, um, the, the maximum product subarray, right? And in this case so far, we the maximum product subarray is uh, 120. And then for the, when we get to zero in this case, basically we kind of reset our maximum number maximum so far and the minimum so far to be zero. And once we get to negative 10, you can see we're starting a brand new contiguous subarray, right? And at the end, you can see that the maximum is zero, the minimum is negative 10, and then so on and so forth. So once we get to two, you can see we have two and negative 20. At the end, you can see we uh, once we get to eight, we have 16 and negative uh, uh, 120, right? So you can see that we keep track of the the uh, the maximum product subarray throughout the array, right? And then we for each iteration, we first get the maximum so far, the maximum value that we've seen so far, and then we have to keep track of the minimum value that we get so far. So then, once we update the max so far and the min so far, we also have to update the result. So the result is either the current uh, maximum product subarray or the, the maximum value that we've seen so far, right? So this will give us a time complexity of big O of n, uh, big o of n where n is the number of elements that we have in the array. And the space complexity, because we're not using an array or anything, we're basically just using three variables to keep track of the, uh, the, the max that we've seen so far and the min that we've seen so far, as well as the maximum product subarray, right? So therefore, the space complexity is just going to be constant. So now let's take a look at how we can do this in code. What we're going to do is we're going to use those variables, right? So we're going to have max so far, which is going to equal to the first element that we have. And we're also going to have min so far, which is also equal to num set zero. And we're also going to have a result which stores the maximum product that we've seen so far, right? So in this case, it's going to be nums at zero as well. So at the end, we're basically going to return result, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a for loop, which start at the second element in the array. So n is going to be equal to nums.length. So what we're going to do is for each iteration, we first go to update a max so far. So max so far is equal to the maximum, okay, is either the current item, so nums at i, or it's going to be max so far times nums at i. Or we have minimum. so far times the current item, okay? And once we update our max so far, we also have to update our min so far. But the thing is that we also have, before we update the max so far, we have to store the previous value, right? Onto a temporary variable. Because if I update the current value, right? Just like this one, if we update the current value, there's no way that we can be able to compare the minimal value. So now for the min, so far is equal to either the maximum that we've seen so far, right? So it's going to be the current, either the current item or the maximum that we've seen so far or the minimum that we've seen so far, right? So maximum so far times the current item or minimum so far times the current item. And uh, we also need to put this in a uh, math.max. And this have to be a min. Okay, so now 
once we update the max and the min, we're going to update our result. So result is equal to either the current result, right? The current maximum product or the maximum that we've seen so far. Okay. And at the end, we're just going to return result. Okay. So let's try to run our code. And now let's try to submit. Uh, you can see we have a false answer. That's because... That's because we have to get the temp max, right? So we have to use the temp max instead of the, the max so far. Okay, now let's try to submit again. And you can see we have our success. So this is basically how we solve the uh, maximum product subarray. And there you have it. And thank you for watching.